Now, as a part of advanced visualizations, there may be use cases for more advanced 3D applications. Advanced programs might not necessarily require advanced knowledge to use, but mainly because of the wide range of file formats that it supports. A good example of this is, let's say that you had a pattern. And this pattern is actually a JPEG image. And the idea is that you would want to convert this pattern to 3D. Now, traditionally, one might want to trace the pattern, um, maybe using a 3D software, maybe SketchUp. Uh, in order to um, convert this pattern to a 3D. However, we can use a combination of uh, vector programs and advanced 3D programs to get a quite adequate 3D representation of a pattern. So, if we could actually um, right click and open this pattern in Illustrator now in Illustrator of course this is a raster image so you will notice that it is indeed pixelated however there is a feature called image trace and usually to access image trace you would go to window then look for image trace that's here and a dialog will pop up that looks like this now how it works is you select an uh, image a pixel related image and then you can just use the image trace icon um, these are different algorithms that run in order to interpret this pattern. So for example, we can try the first one, which is auto and just give it a while for it to run. Now, after it runs, it has created a vector version. It's not perfect. As you can see, some areas kind of have this here. So what you can do is actually adjust some of these values or try different um, combination so for example you could try low color and it would use another set of algorithms to generate the curves it's so low low color perhaps works a little better or we could try black and white we can also adjust it for um, less curves and more detail to get a nice balance of the two. We can also use an outline mode which gives us a outline of like that which is not usually the most accurate one so let's go with the black and white All right, now once the pattern has been achieved, what we can do now is convert this to a um, path and line work, just raw line work, because right now it's still a image tracing pattern. So we can go to edit and, uh, sorry, object, and then we go to expand. And we can choose to expand this into line work. All right, so now that it is expanded, it's actual line work that we can actually click and edit. Now what we're going to do is we are going to save this. And we're gonna save this as a Illustrator file. And we're going to call this 
pattern for 3D import. Now the trick with this is to save it as a the earliest format of Illustrator that is possible. So we're going to have to choose a drop down list and save it as Illustrator 3. And in this case, we're going to use 3D Max as this is one of those um, cases where you would need a advanced 3D program to um, to interpret the line work that's coming natively from another program. So for example, if we go to 3D Max and go to import, we see where Max is able to read um, Illustrator files natively. Now this is a big difference um, compared to DWGs as we could have exported the pattern in a DWG, but unfortunately the DWG format would make that pattern basically unworkable. The fact that 3D Max is an advanced program, it is able to read the Illustrator files natively. And what that gives us is the ability to be able to do more, to have more options with what we get from um, directly from Illustrator. So let's work with it as a single object. And there it is. Now we don't necessarily have to know a whole lot about 3ds max in order to work with this now once we're in 3d max because of the advanced tools in 3ds max we are able to do much more advanced modeling so for example attempting to uh, to interpret a model like this in SketchUp or another simpler platform, uh, you wouldn't have as much flexibility. So for example, we can actually add, a, and this won't be a tutorial for 3ds Max, but just so you know some of the features, we can add a modifier upon this um, spline work. If I look here, you can see where um, 3ds Max has interpreted the spline work beautifully from directly from um, Illustrator and all of these splines are nicely curved and all closed. So what that means is that if we should add a edit poly modifier, which is a way to modify elements in 3ds Max. we are now able to select the individual solids that make up this shape. So for example, I can select all of these shapes here. And I can actually, I can detach these shapes if I wish. There we go. And now we have basically um, manipulated our pattern. Now, additionally, I could select all of these patterns here and we could extrude them
like that. I could select these patterns um, and this end. And for example, there are even more advanced tools that we could use. For example, we could select these areas here. And perform a inset. And what the inset is, we probably have to use the incremental values. notice what's happening here it is no it has now created a kind of offset with this value here so we can say okay and then perhaps we could extrude this value like that So these are just some examples of the more advanced set of tools that we have with 3ds max if maybe we wanted to use this as maybe some kind of um, um, structural device or um, grill work this just gives an example of how you can take um, data from one program and use some of the advanced um, features to edit in another program now once we have the data here we can always export this as a different format so we can always just use 3d max just for its more advanced tool set and its ability to um, interoperate between multiple software and then when we're finished we can just export our result and we'll save that here and maybe we use um, maybe SketchUp more natively we can always import what we did in the more advanced program and continue our workflow in SketchUp. And this is one of the major advantages of using a more advanced program. Uh, it's just the ability to move between different programs. And we don't even necessarily have to learn how to use 3D Max to its full extent but just enough to maybe import something, maybe convert it or extrude it and then export it. Once the, once the surfaces are back into familiar ground, you can use any of the regular tools such as the section tool, like that to get any output that you would want or to maybe combine it with other um, forms of output maybe we can go from here and take this into twin motion by saying 
C in twin motion. And now we can see where we have taken a model directly from we have taken this directly from a image converted it to vector using illustrator open the illustrator file in 3ds max where there are more advanced modeling options so we could do things like extrude the pattern and turn it into a solid then we take it back into sketchup maybe that's our regular production software or maybe we could have taken it into Revit. But the main idea is to be able to use any program for its intended use. And 3ds Max is really intended to do advanced tasks. And as soon as you achieve that goal, you just move back into the platform that you are used to.